So this is gonna be the second thing that I'm reading to you tonight, and this one is a lot less depressing than the poem that I just read you, which came from my book. I will leave all the details of that below. This thing that I'm about to give you is actually not in the book. However, if you like it, the character who wrote it, um, that's Eden, one of my vampire characters, and he does actually have a whole novella in the book. It's the very last thing um, in the book, and it is, it's the size of a novella, it's a whole novella, um, which was added at the last minute. It was the last thing I wrote for the book. Thought it was only going to be like a little kind of ending and it, it yeah Eden had a lot to say. Um, so yes if you like this there is there is some of Eden in the book. He pretty much took over the whole fucking book in fact. But um, yeah so this thing it came from one of my blogs. I have two writing blogs. One of them is The Putrescent Vein which is the same name as my book and that is just kind of random short stories and poetry and anything that comes to mind really and it's generally Really fairly serious mostly, um, whereas the other blog The Angry Vampires is just centred around a particular group of vampires who are my main characters. They are the ones who started me writing and took over my life since about 2011 um, and I've been writing about them ever since. There are I don't know how many novels written and half written about them and uh, maybe, maybe by the end of this year you will get the first one of those novels which is starting in 1847. It's kind of the history, um, charting the history of the vampires and how they all met and kind of their lives together. But the blog stuff is set all in the present day and it's kind of a bit of an alternate universe. The, all the stuff that goes on in the books is really not mentioned that much on the blog just because it would be completely impossible for me to sync up the timelines with, you know, a random blog post I make with what's going on in their real life. Because <laughs> I tried writing it that way, but while I was writing the modern day novels, you know, I couldn't just keep stopping the actual plot to go, you know what? Sainsbury's have fucking annoyed me today, so let's ignore all the, all the drama and write a rude letter to Sainsbury. I couldn't do it, so it's, um, it's kind of a parallel universe that sort of seeks alongside that's a lot more peaceful and where they have lots of time to write facetious furious letters to people which Eden mostly does uh, quite a lot. So yes, um, if you are not familiar with Eden, I've written myself some some notes since there was so much to say before getting started. But yes, Eden basically, he is 195 years old as of this month, um, because I gave him my birthday. Uh, they've all obviously got their own birthdays, but um, Eden got mine because it's an accursed day and lots of bad things historically have happened on my birthday and I thought that suited Eden. <laughs> so I gave him my birthday and um, as such when I get older he gets even older than I do. So yes he is 195 as of now, a little bit goth, Anna likes writing angry facetious letters to people. In fact if the first of the historical novels does come out anytime soon one of the very first things it mentions is Eden writing rude letters to people um, and actually quite a lot of that book is um, in letter form. It's kind of letters between him and his best friend Rob when he's just become a vampire and he's off traveling and he he writes letters. Anyway I don't think there's really much else for me to say so I suppose I'd better start reading. Um, so this blog post I wrote it absolutely years ago actually but for some reason it popped to mind recently and I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to read. So this blog post basically it was intended to be in the form of a written word file by E on a night when he was alone at home and very bored and decided to get drunk on Listerine um, and it's his kind of captain's log of the night as it went which he saved in a word file called Kate has abandoned me dot doc and I think this blog post was originally entitled Minty Blue Oblivion if I'm right so anyway here we go <laughs> captain's log night of misery some more things I wonder about Number one. What is the difference between peppermint schnapps and mouthwash? Is there any? They're both minty and alcoholic. I think it might be nothing more than a matter of social convention and attractive packaging, and as such I shall not be duped. Mmm, Listerine. I wonder if my piss will turn blue. I think I would enjoy that. Note to self, observe piss in hope of dramatic colour change. Number two. Why is it that whenever I pass a pathetically hobbling OAP in the street, I get the overwhelming urge to start skipping exuberantly along in a glorious display of my youthful vigour? Once I even did a cartwheel. 
that was probably overkill. Number three, it's very boring without Kate here. Nobody else in this house wants to fuck me, and that's a very depressing state of affairs. More Listerine needed. Minty happiness. Number four, why are all fruits essentially round, except for bananas, which are dick-shaped? There must be some sinister symbolism in that. Why was the dick-shaped banana not the fruit of temptation in the garden of me? I think God missed a trick with that one. Thou shalt not eat of the dick-shaped fruit. Thou shalt not wrap thy innocent lips around the crude banana of sodomy. Number five, if people could piss out of their fingertips, would that make pissing into wine glasses a socially acceptable pastime? Or would fingers become rude things? Probably not the latter. Everybody knows that most people's fingers have been in very, very rude places at least once. Number six, come to think of it, even the most profoundly celibate nun has enjoyed a face full of pussy when she was born. How terribly rude life is. A Listerine toast to the rudeness of life, splurted out of a dick, gobbled up by a vagina, brewed in a womb. I like that word. Womb. I'm going to say it more often. A toast to the womb. I think my tongue's turning blue. Maybe I should pour some Listerine in my eye as well. I've always fancied having blue eyes. Oh, Jesus shit, fuck, crap. Oh, note to self. Eyes don't like drinking Listerine. They haven't even gone blue or anything. Just red and watery and ouchy and a little bit minty. What fresh breath you have, Mr. Eyeball. Shame no one's here to fuck you, isn't it? Number seven. Feel a bit strange now. It's almost like laudanum. Quite nostalgic. I miss laudanum. There was something deeply cathartic about drinking that filth until my entire mouth went numb and then writing wonderfully furious letters to people in the dribbly handwriting of a shell-shocked spastic and just when I'd finished my masterpiece I would be explosively sick all over it with no warning at all. In fact, it would surprise me so much that I would just start laughing and laughing until I was sick all over the previous sick and then I would feel depressed again and go to bed. Thank God for servants. I wish we still had them. There's nothing more ridiculous than having to clean up your own sick. Sends me all thoughtful and depressed. This is what my insides look like. This is what I'm made of inside. Slimy, reeking, slippery things and oozy, gooey puddles. And now I'm smeared all over the carpet. Am I losing a part of my soul every time I vomit? If so, should I eat it? Oh, this is horrible. I remember consuming that mushroom the first time around. And it's still whole. However did I manage that? Number eight. I do wish Samuel would stop lighting the bloody fires when it's barely November. Makes me think about climate change and that's always horribly depressing. Every time I wake up being boiled alive, I feel sure that a thousand Arctic penguins have just committed suicide as the sun beats down on their melting beaches and big fat wobbly polar bears waddle about in skimpy g-strings. No one ever really explains to me what climate change does, but I feel sure it must be something like that. And what if it gets hot here? I don't want that. Horrible British weather keeps all the tourists out of my garden. I don't want tourists wandering about the place. Ghastly bloody ice cream vans rolling across my lawn. Furious Eskimos smearing their fishy fingers all over the Cadillac. Disenfranchised penguins crapping in the garage. Climate change is beastly. Number nine, Listerine gone. Feel a bit sick. Got another bottle though and this one's purple. What colour does blue and purple make? Drunk. Blue and purple makes drunk. This one tastes a bit nicer too. I told you there was no reason not to drink Listerine. The bottle's even a nice shape to hold on to when you're drunk and it's made of plastic so it doesn't smash if you drop it. Tell me that wasn't designed for getting drunk with. Number 10. Starting to feel a bit depressed now. I think it's the Listerine. Purple is such a melancholy colour. Kate's abandoned me, and although nobody will speak the true reasons aloud, we all know it, and nobody will let me forget. I don't know what it is with me and weddings. I think I must be cursed, but in my defence, other people are supposed to be drunk enough to ignore the fact that I'm on an enormous amount of drugs and dripping wet from falling in the lake. It is very rude to mock another's misfortune. Even if that other is wandering around proclaiming crude slurred limericks to the bride and passing out in the middle of a table. And that is why Kate has abandoned me. Her entire family think I'm a terrible influence, that I'm a deranged junkie fuck-up who can't be trusted with a shitting potato. And every time I go near them, I can hear them all thinking such foul thoughts about me that I have to go and... Well, is it so very unreasonable to shoot oneself full of heroin in the face of such profound and fiery hatred? I think not. A Listerine toast to the fucking bastards who despise me. <clears throat> Everybody hates me. 
an ode to bitterness. In Listerine's murky purple depths, I find myself alone, bereft, abandoned here to pickle in mouthwash, because they all think I'm scum. I tried to be good, I tried to be appropriate, I put on my shirt and my tie, and then I got to that horrible wedding, and the people were rude and I wanted to die, because I hate all weddings, I hate them all, burn the dresses, blow up the walls, my memories of weddings are worse than yours, so should I feel bad for being a bore? for shooting myself full of terrible drugs and giving your mum a rude sort of hug? Would you rather I wept in the corner all night, hung myself or got in a fight? I'm sorry my misery offends you so much that I'm a blight on your lives and a horrible cunt. But is it such a terrible sin to pledge my love to heroin? The bride and groom barely knew each other, but for decades this drug has been my lover. My commitment is pledged in dusty years, not the fickle gleam of a bridesmaid's tears. I think you're jealous, I think you're bitter that my love is more than the cheap white glitter of wedding shoes and diamond rings. And none of these mean anything compared to a love that will always stay, that will never hate me and walk away. So is it such a terrible sin to pledge my love to heroin, to stumble through your church of lies, tell a rude poem to the blushing bride, to fall asleep on a shiny table, to slur and mumble and seem mentally unstable? Does that give you license to hate me forever because I fucking detest all weddings? I don't give a shit, I will spit on your tits. Listerine toaster being a dick. Listerine toaster possibly being sick in a minute. Well, that was the most minty vomit I have ever done in my entire life. Novel way to clean the sink, at least. Horrible. Cheered me up, though, because it was such a pretty colour. It just got bluer and bluer with every splosh. Quite the experience, really. Can't complain. Number 11, maybe? It's either 2am or 4am, depending on the way I squint at the clock. But either way, that means it's Sunday now, and it also means that I'm very, very drunk. So, if I pass out on the floor, the next person to kick me in the face will be Kate, and then this horrible abandonment will be over. On the downside, it's November now, and December comes next. And December contains Christmas, which is like a sort of horrible mini-wedding with a pudding for a bride and a reeking turkey church and a furious disapproving tree that scowls over the whole proceedings like a fat Jewish mother-in-law. Crackers and satsumas and thinly veiled loathing. Would anyone believe me if I said I was staying in bed with terrible constipation? Is that still a thing? Perhaps I should go for Ebola instead. Ebola seems to be very trendy at the moment. Blah. The words are all jiggling about all over the screen in a profoundly horrible manner. Hope I'm not sick on the laptop. I don't think computers like being sicked on, even if it's blue and minty. But then if I did pass out in a puddle of my own sick, Kate would know how much I've suffered tonight. No servant to clean it up, though, would regret it. Perhaps I should be sick in the bath. That would be quite hygienic. E uh, no. Sick in the bin. Think I'm beginning to realise why people don't drink Listerine. Have made grave error. Aww. Goodbye, cruel world. And that's all of it. And uh, that was less depressing than the other one. Um, but yes, you might recognise some of the poem in that as being lyrics from one of my songs from a while back. Um, and that song actually came about in this blog post. It was completely spontaneously written by Eden in this blog post. And yes, it was actually intended to be pretty facetious. It was quite a facetious poem when he initially wrote it, but then I liked that bit about heroin and it became a song. And um, yeah, which is often the way it goes really, that Eden is far better at writing songs than I am. And yeah, I only got into music due to Eden. And the first thing I ever wrote, poetry, song, anything wise, was um, Thanks for All the Blood, since I was writing about Eden and all of them. And it's like they're in a band, they need songs, they need lyrics at the very least. So Thanks for All the Blood got written just as a poem. And then I thought, let's see if it could actually have a tune. And, uh, and then I had to learn guitar. And kind of, I still suck, but you know. And then there was music, and, uh, and that's how it all happened. But yes, anyway, ramble. If you liked that, as I say, there is there is a big Eden novella in the book, so 
go and get the book, go and get the book. Or if you don't want to buy the book, then yes, there are like years and years and years worth of Eden type posts on the Angry Vampires blog, which is always in the description box. So there's lots of that. And um, yeah, if you, uh, if you are familiar with the blog stuff at all, um, and you feel there are any subjects, any trends or any things that Eden needs to have a rant, a thoughtful evening or a kind of furious limerick about, then, uh, then give him some ideas. He is always up for things to be angry about. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, yeah, I don't think I have much else to say. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I dare say I will plumb the Angry Vampires blog some more and see if there's anything else I feel like reading because this was quite fun. So yeah, hope you didn't hate it. Going away now. Bye bye. <laughs>